so now that you understand what is six sigma you understand cause and effect philosophy the core formula used in six sigma so i would like to just summarize this section that, that is the section 1 using three main topics that is why six sigma is important why companies need to go up to the standard and meet the standard of six sigma then how we can manage people and what kind of like crisis the companies are facing today and in briefly in very brief i'm going to discuss how six sigma is implemented in the organizations right so first thing that why six sigma change is imperative that is you need to go up you need to just rise to the level of six sigma why you cannot get it done like you cannot just think that it's okay we don't need to do it right so when we talk about six sigma that change is imper imperative means it's important for your company your organization to stay in business there are few things you need to understand when we discuss this topic the first one is management's role right so if you if you just look at the traditional organizations i gave gave you a brief end when i told about the differences about of six sigma and three sigma so in traditional organizations the role of management is to design systems and processes to create and deliver value to the customers and shareholders so their approach was very narrow they wanted to create a product right which delivers value to the customer and shareholder but if you look at the markets today you know what will happen is that the problem is they forget that this is a never ending task you cannot create a product and then sit idly for even one or two years that okay we are done and it's sufficient why why we need to keep on just improving our services we need to keep on innovating we need to just launching new products if we want to, our organization should be alive and running the reason is that your competitors are not going to sit idle so they would be constantly developing something or they would be innovating something and what would happen they will steal your customers right and then customer demands are not constant and especially in this age we are living in this age and you know that our demands are not constant customer demands are constantly changing they require new things they require better processes they require better services they it's very difficult to satisfy the customer okay and then the capital markets offer investors new ways to earn the return on their investment so if your company is backed by people who are just funding you funding your organization so if you're thinking that you're not working on your processes you are not innovating you're not designing new products so there are many more many better ways where they can get better return on this in, in, uh, in uh, better return on their investments so why they would like to fund in your organization organization they will obviously pull back their funds so all this is just going to give you a shock nothing else so this is why it is imperative to constantly change management system so it's important that you understand that you need to innovate you need to improve your processes you need to come up with better products and services then coming to the second point which says organizations resist change it's not only organizations it's a human tendency that we resist change and we resist change until the time we think that everything is crumbling down right so enterprises resist change until their current system is failing one or more stakeholder right if they think that they will they won't change enterprises don't like to change their systems their processes maybe their teams until and unless they realize that what is happening is that their stakeholders are not happy or their products are failing in the market and it can be in many ways like declining market share as your competitors are launching new and better products and services or customer complaints are reaching the epidemic proportions or your share price is trending downwards so what actually six sigma teaches us is that we should not be reactive if you know as an organization you cannot be reactive you have to be proactive so reactive is when something is done it's wrong there are defects and then you just uh, take hold and just change the things try to make them like you just try to fix the defects but what does proactive means proactive means that you don't allow these defects to happen you don't allow the things to go wrong so basically <clears throat> 
if you are a student of Six Sigma or Lean, so you know there's one law that's called Murphy's law, and it is an uh, uh, like it, it used to state that if something is ha if, if something has to go wrong, it will go wrong. But if you are a Six Sigma or Lean student, you have to change this law. You have to just throw this law in a dustbin because as Lean or Six Sigma professional. If there, if you think that something will go wrong, just try to find out the root causes. Try to figure out how you, how you can fix it, and just make better products and services. Don't wait until things go wrong. And then, why we need to go to the level of Six Sigma? Because its ability to respond to customer demand. You know, whether stagnant or dynamic customer demand is key focus on Six Sigma. So from the beginning, when I started teaching uh, this topic, so I told you that as Six Sigma professional, as a lean professional, two things you always need to keep in your mind. First, what are your customer demands? Second, what are the what are what kind of profits you are getting to your organization? So if you are focusing on those, these two things, this means you are on some you are on the right track. So when applied, I am talking about Six Sigma, so when applied at process level, Lean and Six Sigma principles result in reduced inventories and cycle time. It, it means uh, it, it, your system is better in meeting the customer demands. It results in organizations which are agile, so which can change according to the customer specifications that invest in adaptability rather than volume efficiencies. This means that they, the companies are adaptive to what their customer demands. They are not creating something what they think they should sell, but they are making something which is actually demanded by the customer. Resources are only deployed when needed. So this basically means push system and uh, sorry in the pull system in the lean. So that means the focus is to meet custom what current customer uh, value uh, what customer gives value to. So, so, so actually you produce the products or you produce the services what are actually valued and demanded by the customer. In short, why we need to reach Six Sigma level? Because Six Sigma proactively embraces change by incorporating change in the management systems. That is, it will, it will just embrace the changes that are required in our product and services. And then these changes are also in, uh, incorporated in the management system so that the management thinking, the processes, the change according to the changes that are required in our products and services. So how does uh, how does Six Sigma do that? Okay, full and part time change agent positions are created. So organizations which start implementing Six Sigma, they just create full and part time change agent positions with the supporting infrastructure. That is, they are given all that is required to collect information, to gather information, and these this infrastructure is designed to integrate the change. That whatever suggestions they have to make, so this infrastructure is also designed to integrate that change in the, the system. And then systems are implemented to monitor changing customer, shareholder, employee inputs, right? So we uh, in Six Sigma, they create systems which are implemented, that is how they can monitor how they, what kind of changes are there in the customers, the shareholder or whatever the employee input has been and integrate this new information, that is that they make a system in such a way so that all the information we get from these part time or full time change agents or from the customers, the stakeholders or the employees, this new information is integrated into the business processes so that we can change our processes according to the demands of the market or whatever is required by the customer. Uh, now this approach can be a sophisticated computer modeling. Now how each company is going to do this, it depends upon what is their approach. It can be very hi-fi, they can use gamification or they can use computer modeling or it can be simple statistical, basic statistical analysis. So it's like in Six Sigma we use tools which are very complicated and we also use tools which are very simple and similar is the case with Lean. Okay?
So, analytical techniques are applied to stakeholder inputs. So, techniques are applied so that the information can be taken from the stakeholders. Now, stakeholders are not only the employers, they are the people who have uh, just invested their money in a company, they are the external customers who, from whom, the, like the suppliers from whom we are getting the raw material. So, the, the, uh, the information is collected, analytical techniques are applied and so that these then whatever results we get are implemented on the enterprise plus process matrix at all level. And then this results in change in behavior as well as more obvious organizational effectiveness. So when this is done, what you say is that what you see is that the, there is change in the behavior of the team, the people who are working, and overall the organization becomes more effective. So what exactly Six Sigma does? As I already told you, that Six Sigma replaces the gut feeling. Okay. So the the convention. So we always have to question the conventional wisdom. That is what what we think okay so it is how do you know so you all, the managers who are implementing six sigma or if you are trying to do it so whatever information you collect should always be backed by facts data everything okay and in case you get any reports you should always check that there are facts behind it there is data behind it so some kind of study analysis has been done for example if some manager asks an employee maybe his name is john so you you can say nice report on on time deliveries john but show me how you think it's important to the customer. So if somebody brings you a report, a person who, or a manager who is trained in Six Sigma techniques, he will ask that how do you think your report is uh, somewhere connected to what is important to customer. And if he just shows you how it's connected, then ask him that show me the data, the figures, that is the chart covering last 52 weeks and don't forget the control limit. So basically what I'm trying to explain is that your conventional wisdom should be just transferred to something which is fact based and data based or another question like another example is how do the internal dashboards relate to the top level dashboards that are important to the stakeholders so basically again the thing is that whatever you try to do in six sigma or in lean has always some kind of information the facts the data the numbers behind it just a while back, I was talking that how the organizations need to change, why change is imperative, and how the Six Sigma organizations have change agents, right, who manage change, who bring in the information. So the big question is how change is managed, like even if you bring change, how you can manage this change. And the, when we talk about the change agents, so they have three goals, like, which they have to accomplish to bring in the change and make any organization or convert any organization organization into a Six Sigma organization. So the three goals are the first goal, the very basic goal is change the way the people think, right? And then the need to bring in change in the norms and finally when these two are done, we can expect change in the organization system and processes. So these are the three main goals when we talk about managing change and what the change agents do. So, uh, coming to the first point, let, uh, let discuss each one in a bit detail. So, coming to the first point, change the way the people think. So, helping people modify their perspective is a fundamental activity of a change agent. Because until and unless this fundamental, like the how the people do their work, how they think that the work should be done, you need to change the fundamental thinking of individuals. And all change begins with the individual at personal level, right? If you can't co convince a person or an employee that what you're trying to tell them is better for them, better for the complete organization or the survival of the organization, they are not going to change for you, right? So change in behavior requires change in thinking. For this, you need to showcase how change is better for them and complete organization and as I already said, for the survival of the organization. Then comes change in the norms. So basically what are norms? Norms are certain standards, rules or you can say uh, models or patterns which the employees or the people of the, your group like they follow right. 
so all organizations have norms or expectations so they have certain way of working they have certain expectations from what their employees should be doing what kind of results they should be getting and change cannot un occur until organizations norm change so you have to change the norms if you want to bring in the change then in six sigma organization when we talk about a six sigma organization one effective norm is data driven decision making that is your decisions are based on data they are based on facts that is focused on providing maximum value to the stakeholders now stakeholders can be external uh, uh, your external uh, customers internal customers or your stakeholders or the people who have invested money owners employees everyone then finally comes change in organization systems and processes so this is the meat of the thing that is whatever you're trying to achieve at the personal level individual level and change at the norms just shows up here in your systems and processes so all work in a process and quality improvement requires change at a process and system level this means whatever you are trying to do is you are trying to change your system or your process to produce better products which are defect free which are according to the specifications and which fulfill customer requirements right and this can be only achieved on sustainable basis when individual behavior changes and organ organizational norms are changed so change agents fundamentally accomplish this goal by building buy in within the key stakeholder groups that is they just convince the basic st uh, stakeholders when i talk about stakeholders they can be suppliers they can be employees they can be management affected by the change because until and unless they are convinced that this change is required they are not going to change